Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Doodle Robot and today I'm going to take you along while I alter the a page in The Magical City, a coloring book by Lizzie Mary Cullen. So yeah, so I'm going to show you the page in a second. We're going to have scintillating conversation, so a color and chat. I've got my notes here all laid out about what we're going to talk about. But first, let's talk about the page we're going to alter. I've already drawn it on, well, the majority of it. And it is the Sherlock Holmes page, because I am a huge, huge fan of Sherlock Holmes. Be it the old books, the old, I think it was BBC who put them out, the old movies of Sherlock Holmes, which stuck to very much the time period. Of course, I became a, a super fan when uh, BBC came out with Sherlock with Benedict Cumberbatch and Martin Freeman. Uh, then, you know, the passion was kind of reborn again. Uh, so watch that. I watched all of the, well, not all of the, um, I really liked the, the, the American version of Sherlock with the female Dr. Watson. It was called Elementary. I didn't get to see all those because I think I moved and didn't have TV or something. I can't, I can't remember. But anyways, we'll talk more about that in a second. I'll, uh, sh mm, I'm not sure I can zoom you in. Maybe a smidge here. Sorry for the shaky camera. So what I've done here, and I've recently been on a Sherlock kick because I, I recently purchased uh, the whole series from BBC of Sherlock. And so, you know, as I was blowing through that on my spring break right now, um, I'm like, there's a Sherlock page in one of those Lizzie Mary Cullen books. I need to, I need to do that one. So <laughs> we're doing it. So all I've done thus far is I've added to his uh, pipe smoke here, and in there I've written 221B, you know, because that's where they live, 221B, Baker Street. It says right there, Baker Street. And I've taken a really long time to put in the wallpaper. Now, it's, it's a simulation of the wallpaper from the show, the modern-day show Sherlock from BBC. Um, it's a simplified version of that because that's a very complicated wallpaper. So I studied it for a long time. I looked up pictures and studied it for a long time. But what I've come up with, um, oh, I guess you can see, I've got, I've made a pattern here that simulates that pattern on the wallpaper. And then another little pattern here that simulates, uh, it, it kind of deviates, it simulates it deviates from the wallpaper design in, in Sherlock's apartment. The upstairs of Mrs. Hudson, I think. Uh, so, and I've done that by, you know, just laying out a grid and very carefully placing them on there. Oh, I've also outlined the Sherlock here because the kind of the silhouette we have of the Sherlock with all the designs inside of him is, I don't want it to get lost on what I plan to do out here. So, I've outlined him. I think I'm going to paint that in red, probably, or color pencil it in red. I don't know yet. Now, on top of the wallpaper, once I have it inked in, I believe I'm going to paint, I'm at least going to paint the black, the, the, the shapes of the black part of the wallpaper. And I don't know what I'm going to do on the negative space of the wallpaper yet. Probably mm, either paint, which would be flat, no shading or shadowing too much, or, uh, and by paint I mean acrylic paint, or color pencil. Now, in some pictures I saw, it sometimes it looks white, sometimes it looks off-white. So I might, if I do pencil, I might want to give it that kind of aged paper look to it. I'm not sure what we're going to do with that yet. But on top of that, whatever medium I choose... I'm going to paint that the yellow smiley face that Sherlock spray painted on his apartment wall. <laughs> so that will be there. And up here, I think I'm going to do the I am sure locked from the phone in the 
oh, I don't know the title, Bel something about Belgravia. It's the one where Sherlock goes to Buckingham Palace in a sheet, <laughs> you know, and he gets, he gets involved with Irene Adler. Um, so that's on her phone. That's the passcode on her phone. I may, being a super fan girl, I've done other paintings of Sherlock and um, I've had mind palace in them. So I don't know. I mean, his head is filled with a 221 Baker Street. It's not a palace, but I might, I might do that here. And I'm, I think I'm going to collage the I am. I am sure locked and maybe I'll collage the mind palace if I decide to add the mind palace or maybe just spray blood spatter on the whole thing or something. I don't know. We shall see. Before we get started, though, does anybody, what is this right here? I know this is a lamp and I can figure out everything else. I, do, I don't know what this is. This must be something from... England or London or the UK so if you are from there and you know what that is and so I can look it up please let me know I feel like it might be a sign because this is a light so I don't know if you know let me know in the chat box all right so first things we have to do is find what pin we're going to use I have my, my my basket of pin here I have two well, three, Sharpie also, uh, but you can only use Sharpie on a single-sided paper. Um, I have two kinds of uh, black liner pins that I like. I really like the Artline series, and I only have three of those left, although I have, I have all the numbers in a cart on Blick right now because I'm going to get more. I really like, I think this one's too small, and I just used this for something else. It's probably not going to make it. It has a really nice tip that I like. I may get too close here. I don't know. This is a really tiny one, although the biggest of the lot. I really like this tip. It's my favorite tip to use. Uh, but Artline is uh, water-based, and it's only water-resistant. So you have to be careful where you're going to use that. If you're going to use any water medium, it's going to run. The other ones that I like, and I haven't tried every every liner pen out there, but uh, is Micron. And I have I started with a big pack. <laughs> these are these are what I have left. Um, they have a slightly different tip, which I like as well. But I prefer I prefer the other. Let me find a bigger pen so you can see it. Here we go. Ten. I believe the 12 is, I had to throw that away, the 12 ran out of ink. It's a slightly different nib that I don't like as much, but this one says that it's archival ink and it's permanent. At least it said that on the Blick thing when I bought it. So I'm going to figure out, I'm going to zoom you in, and we're going to figure out, sorry, this is paint from another project. We're going to figure out which one is probably the same size as the line work on the paper here. And different artists use different line work. Like, I haven't figured out how to replicate an eerie line work yet. I tried with a uh, colored pencil, but that didn't work so well. So let's see here. Um, we're going to get super close. And I think... Am I casting any weird shadows? No, it doesn't seem like it. Okay. Oh, but the camera's in my in my way. All right, let's see here. Any weird shadows? Probably. Nope, still weird shadows. I guess that didn't matter. Oh, it's probably this one here. Okay, let's try that. All right, so we're going to try, let's, it's usually, I guess, oh, no, no, hold on. <laughs> I'm going to crash the pin into the, uh, into the paper, so let's get really close here and see. The five seems kind of, oh, I'm not even in camera, so sorry. Oh, my goodness gracious. Oh, this is not going well. 
let's see, that's too far back. Okay, here we go. Oh my gosh. All right. Let's try that again. Let's see here. Let me do it right here. Am I in camera? Yes. Okay. That seems a little, a little big. That was a, what was that? That was a five. So let's try a three. Okay, that seems too small. We don't have a four. Okay, I'm gonna try the three. We'll see how it goes. I've gotta switch glasses to the, the really powerful ones. All right, so I'm going to start with the smoke because the that's in front of my uh, wallpaper. So I gotta look sharp here because there's a lot of competing lines and I didn't erase. All right, I think I know what I'm doing here. Okay, and so while we ink this, we're gonna talk about, uh, remember I'm a sci-fi geek, that's why we're called Doodle Robot. So we're gonna talk about where Star Trek and Sherlock Holmes intersect. Yes, this is a nerd alert. Sci-fi Sherlock nerd alert for all of you out there. All right, so a brief history. I grew up watching Star Trek in rerun form. No, I am casting weird shadows here. And am I in camera? This is, you have no idea how hard this is to do. Okay, maybe. Can I do this? Here we go. I generally like something under my hand to, you know, not get my people oils all over. Any weird shadows? No. Okay, so I grew up watching Star Trek. I would run home from school. Grade school. I don't know how old I was, seven, eight, nine, ten, somewhere in there. Um, and it would come on right after school, the reruns of Star Trek and Kung Fu. Does anybody remember Kung Fu? That would be the David Carradine show. He was a Shaolin monk. And then he was traveling through the Old West. This is a really awkward angle for me. Sorry, moving my light a little bit. My head was crashing into it. Uh, yeah, so these are things that informed my very existence. I'm tracing the two here. The smoke goes there though. All right. So I think, personally, I think they had a big a big influence on the person I became. All right, back to the two. So they had a big influence on the person that I became. First of all, Spock is my first love. I was crushed when he passed away, Leonard Nimoy. Um, but, you know, he was the sex appeal, I feel, in Star Trek. Leonard Nimoy. Not Captain Kirk. Leonard Nimoy. Because, I mean, smart is sexy, right? As Irene Adler says in Sherlock Holmes. Okay. I'm just looking very carefully so I don't, uh, I don't mess up what I'm doing here really hard to do this and talk at the same time. So anyways, grew up watching Star Trek Kung Fu. The other show I really, really liked 
when I was a little bit older, not necessarily at, at seven or eight, was Columbo. What do all these characters have in common? I think they're all, uh, I, I feel like they're all pretty much the same character with, you know, some job differences and stuff like that. So they're all very brilliant, very intelligent, very methodical in their thinking. Uh, I would say very unemotional and disciplined, maybe with the exception of Columbo, who probably showed the most emotion, although not a great deal. They all wear the same thing every day. So I would probably classify them all in the minimalist category. Colombo drove that same car for how long? 35 years or something? That is dedication. I, that's why I classify him as a minimalist. And it's funny that I grew up to be a bit like them in some ways, here and there. So, just a... Just a brief overview. Okay, so what we're really going to talk about today is where Star Trek and Sherlock Holmes intersect. Where do they intersect? There are a few. The first intersection we get, well, somebody wrote a book about Spock in like 1968-69, which I didn't read because I was like, one or two or three, you know, I was very young. Um, how Sherlock Holmes and Spock were very much alike. So there's an intersection there. But where we pick up our, our, our topic of discussion is in 1890, the sign of four is where uh, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle writes... Um, I'm paraphrasing. When you eliminate the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. That's where he writes that famous line. And then the intersection points occur in in Oh, what's the movie called? Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country was the name of the movie. And that was the original cast of characters. And in there, Spock says those very words. When you eliminate the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth or the solution, something like that. Uh, and he also says that an ancestor of mine said those words in, what, I don't know what the date was when that movie came out, but my guess would be the 90s. I'm going to guess the 90s. So that sent, you know, sci-fi people into a tizzy because, oh my gosh, Spock is related to Sherlock Holmes, most people who like Star Trek, I would venture to say, like Sherlock Holmes. There's a lot of similarities, even though they're different time periods and all that sort of thing. There's my second two. Don't know if you can see it. There's a two here and a two here. When I add color, it will be more visible. Okay, not sure about this pen. I don't really like this pen. I like the number five better, but we'll persist on here. So I'm doing the one. So the, the big question is, is Spock related to, it's a fictional show, is Spock related to Sir Arthur Conan Doyle or... I prefer to think he's more related to Sherlock Holmes in my little fictional world. That's how I think about it. 
Okay. So that was the first time that, that you know, Sherlock Holmes and Star Trek intersect. Although an interesting note in The Wrath of Khan, I think, I'm pretty sure it was The Wrath of Khan, they, uh, the Star Trek universe collides with another, another big literature great, the, um, oh my gosh, they quote it all the time, it's a favorite book of mine too, um, Oh, the Revolutionary War one. No. The Indust... No. The French Revolution. Um, I can't think of what it's called. Anyways. The famous line from there... I can't think of either. It'll come to me. We'll go back to Star Trek. When I think of it, I'll say it. Oh, A Tale of Two Cities. There we go. And the line at the end is a far better thing I do, a far better place than I have ever been for, something like that. I'm paraphrasing. But yeah, I loved that book in high school. And I've read that book a couple of times. I used to tell my students I would read that book every every decade or so, but I haven't read it in probably 20 years. But anyways, back to... Star Trek. I think I got everything. We got 221B. That is the address of Sherlock Holmes. Okay, so we're going to start on... Now, I have to decide whether I'm going to do the bubbles. I was going to draw the bubbles in, and I drew the big bubbles here that I added, because there's bubbles in the smoke. I don't know why there's bubbles in the smoke. I've never actually seen anybody smoke pipe, but... I'm thinking I should paint those on afterwards instead of drawing them in. So I'm not going to... I don't think I'm going to outline those. Okay. We also see then in the Next Generation Star Trek... There are several Sherlock Holmes episodes. Data becomes obsessed with Sherlock Holmes, and he he starts researching Sherlock Holmes, and then he, uh, you know, quotes Sherlock Holmes. Where do I want to start? Where's a good place to start? Like right in the middle here. Um, and then there's a whole like hollow deck series where they're doing Sherlock Holmes, and then. Uh, I guess the ho the holodeck, I don't know who did it. Maybe LaForge did it, but he programs uh, Moriarty, the, the, the villain, to be able to outwit Data. Data's a computer, so... Uh... So you have to you have to make Moriarty pretty pretty smart for that to outwit another computer, but I mean in the end they win. Oh, spoiler alerts here. Sorry. So Moriarty comes back because they 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 strike a bargain not to destroy Moriarty. So they save his memories in the computer, but then he figures out a way to get out of the ship's computer and come back. And I think that's, you know, three or four episodes where they're kind of messing with the, the world of Sherlock Holmes. Okay, I realize that I need to trace around Sherlock's head here before we do anything. So I'm going to do that. Oh, and I'm going to connect all these lines as well. Eventually, maybe not on camera, but let's make sure I'm in screen here. And I see we're going blurry and not blurry, and maybe I'm too close. I don't know. Okay, so there's that intersection, and then We're back to kind of more present day, not really present day, but in the reboot of Star Trek, 
I can't even name the, the actors who played in the reboot. Um, again, Spock says... And actually, both Spocks say it, because there's al alternate reality Spock. I think both Spocks say it. Whoa. Maybe it's just... Maybe it's just the new Spock. Uh... He says the same quote that I said before. Eliminate the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. Doesn't say a relative said it then, but says it again. So there's another nod to the whole... Am I in camera? I can't even tell. Um, there's another nod to the whole Sherlock Holmes world. And you got to know that sci-fi people live for this sort of thing. All right. Let's see here. Then there is... Then the BBC comes along. And... Does it again. So, in the current BBC, the Sherlock one, I guess it's sort of current. Sherlock says those famous words that Sir Arthur Conan, Conan Doyle, you know, wrote, which should be attributed to him, but, and this is in The Hounds of the Bask Baskerville, which I actually just watched right before doing this, because, ooh, yeah, sorry. I had to think carefully. Do I put a line there or not put a line there? Um, says those famous words. And then, <laughs> you're not in camera. Hold on. Let's get you in camera here. This is really hard. And then Watson, Martin Freeman, says in a, in a twist of roles, because sure, in this particular scene, Sherlock is very upset. He's seen something that he can't believe. He saw the Hound of the Baskerville, which shouldn't exist. It's not a real thing. And he says, and Sherlock is going on and on about his, I was blurry, going on and on about his emotions getting in the way, blah, blah, blah. And so Watson says, okay, Spock, calm down or take it easy or something like that. I can't remember. But I think it's funny that they kind of gave a nod to what Star Trek had done. By, by, you know, in reverse for Sherlock Holmes. So <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny. And I'm sure that I'm not the only, like, sci-fi geek who sat on their couch watching that, you know, when it premiered way back when on PBS. Going, what? Awesome! Because, you know, I'd, I'd, heard the, uh, I'd heard the Star Trek references for many, many years. Starting in the 90s, I think. Just checking to make sure you're still in camera. Really hard to do this and carry on a conversation. So let's see here. Oh, and more, more Sherlock Holmes and Star Trek intersections to be noted that are noteworthy. I'm sure I'm not hitting them all, by the way, people. If you can think of any, go ahead and add them in the comments. My book, everything's in the way here. My equipment is in the way. And you're sort of blurry. Sorry. So in season two, the Reichenbach fall. I don't know if I said that right. At the end, there's a eulogy for Sherlock. Spoiler alert, because people think he died. Well, I won't say what happens, but he didn't. <laughs> so, but there's a eulogy given by Watson, and Watson says, 
Uh, what does Watson say? Watson says, in the eulogy, you were the best man and most human human being that I've ever known. Which again, probably because sci-fi people went berserk, harkens back to the original movies in The Wrath of Khan where Kirk is giving Spock's eulogy and Kirk says he was the most human of all the souls I have encountered in my travels. His was the most human. So, very, very similar sentiments. I think they just, I think they just wanted to give a nod to Star Trek there. All right, we're back to our wallpaper pattern here, but you're blurry. I don't know why you're blurry. All right, so continuing on here. I think that's about it, actually. Those are all my points on Star Trek. That's it. What will we talk about now? So yeah, I just purchased the whole series. of the BBC version of Sherlock. And I've been blowing through it. I have seen it many times before. I used to check it out of the library when I lived where there was a library. And it was easy to do things like that. There's there's a library here. It's just much harder to do things like that here. The checkout for movies is only, gosh, you only get like a week. <laughs> Sometimes I don't even get around to playing it. so. It's easier for me to buy things. Like just before this, I had finished um, an old TV show called Burn Notice, which, oh my gosh, that was a good show. I'm really glad I bought that one. Since I live in the middle of nowhere and I have no internet, no TV, I just have a DVD player and a projector. So um, I buy, usually I buy about, every month I'll buy a new series to work my way through, depending on how long the series is. Um, I guess we'll say on average it's a month. Like, I'm going to blow through Sherlock in a week, probably. It's spring break. I have a little more time than usual. But I just finished up burn notice which is really good that is a show about a burned spy a burned cia spy michael weston he used to be a spy until he got his burn notice and then it's his his quest on trying to get back into the cia it was really good the last two seasons, you know, generally I think that usually, I think it went seven seasons, but usually, in my opinion, most TV shows kind of burn out and get stale at that point, year seven. This one did not get stale. It just got better and better and better. And especially that last season. Sorry, it's hard for you to see what I'm doing here. Why is that? Okay. I was just, thank goodness it was spring break because I was just blowing through it really quickly.
We can look to see if the micron pins are bleeding through. They don't usually, and they're not here either, so that's good. And remember, I'm going to paint, so I don't I don't need these lines to be perfect because whatever I mess up on, I can just touch up with paint. I'm sorry, just trying to figure out my line work here. I don't know. It's hard to see. All right, leaning over the counter here doing this is really making my back hurt. So I'll show you where we are right now. And I'm gonna go away and ink the rest of this at my desk where my back won't be hurting so bad. And I'll come back and give you a glance of that before I start adding all the colors. All right, so I'll be back in just a second. Okay, we're back. So I've got, so as not to be too confusing, because it's a very patterny book, I've got the finished background here. I gotta say, I'm really liking my new electric eraser. That makes life so easy. So I think I will pop back on. I'm gonna go away again and paint. This is not my best inking job. I'm going to go away again and paint the background uh, shapes black. I'm probably not going to do the negative space of the wallpaper yet. And I may even do the outline of Sherlock Red. We'll see. Just so people can see what's going on. I'll try to zoom you in here for close-up. I did mess up in several areas on my inking but they were all inside someplace over here oh yeah right there uh, they're all inside the shape which is going to be black so it doesn't really matter so so yeah i shall be back in just a second to show you the background painted Okay, I thought I'd pop back on really quick and show you where I'm at right now. Let me zoom you in a smidge here. Um, before I paint, I've actually, well, I've started painting. I went around the inside of all my wallpaper pattern shapes here and outlined it with Posca pen, black Posca pen. Since they're going to be black, um, I have a painting video with tips like this if you want to check that out. Uh, if you have an acrylic marker and it matches the color of paint that you're going to use, like black is easy, I don't know, other colors might be more difficult if you have trouble mixing colors to match. Um, but yeah, I've got, it gives me a thicker line to, you know, keep my black paint in that I'm going to use a brush on because that's much quicker. And I think it's better than using Posca pen. Posca pen always seems streaky to me. You have to kind of do two coats and it's expensive so i would much rather use my cheap paint than my you know expensive posca pen for that but i've outlined it gives me a thicker line than the thin lines here to try to try to keep in the lines with so that's just a quick tip for you i'm going to continue on painting the background and i'll come back and show you when i'm done be back in a second okay and here we are with the final step thus far and the end of the video this is uh the background all painted i just used black 
acrylic paint. Uh, and you saw before I outlined, before I painted, because it makes it a little bit easier, I outlined with Posca black pa paint pen. And then just painted in with my Apple Barrel black acrylic paint. I'm kind of liking the white, so I'm not sure I'm going to make it off-white, but we shall see. It depends on how the rest of it, the rest of it goes. So, and then I did, I did the outline around Sherlock red. That's three coats of red paint, by the way. The first, uh, you know, your reds, your purples, some of your greens generally tend to be thin. And when you're going to use those colors, you know, you got to apply multiple coats. So, uh, the first color of red was just too bright red. So then I had to take some green and tone it down a little bit. And then it's two coats of the, the toned down red there. So again, if anybody knows what this is, please let me know so I can look it up. So I know how to color it. And I'm probably going to research 221B out of the Sherlock movies and see what colors the house is. I was just looking at, I feel like the door is blue. I've been watching Sherlock. So the bottom of the, the house is like a white or off white. And then the top part of the house is a different color. I can't remember what I'm going to have to look at pictures online, but all the other alterations that I will do will come in the coloring, the 221B here on the smoke and the smiley face. And of course the Sherlocked phone message there, those will be added on after everything else is done. I think that's going to be collaged on. The smiley face will be painted on. And if I decide to do mind palace anywhere, I'm not sure if that will be collaged on or painted on. We shall see in the end. So I thank you for joining me. I appreciate your time. I hope you have a wonderful evening, morning, afternoon, whatever it is for you. I look forward to seeing you next time. Live long and prosper. Bye-bye.